Marquette students started lining up last night, braving temperatures in the single digits to get the best seats possible for today's in-state showdown with Wisconsin. The line had reached an estimated 1,000 people by 8 a.m. when the fans received a visit from Coach Tom Crean. But we are going to put you in early inside that building. You come in, come excited, be ready to go. And from one to three, let's have an unbelievably great time. And true to his word, Coach Crane brought the Marquette students into the Bradley Center nearly four hours ago during his team's morning shoot-around. Dominique James entertained the fans by signing autographs, and the students treated to an airing of Dumb and Dumber on the arena video boards. Now just moments away from the Dairy State Showdown, number 12, Wisconsin, and number 20, Marquette. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome into an electric Bradley Center. Sean McDonough along with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us. They've been playing since 1917, but this is the first time in this long rivalry. Both are in the top 20 at the time of their ranking. Wisconsin comes in at 8-1 with a typical Badger squad. Wisconsin is big. They're tough. They get the ball inside, and they get to the free throw line. An outstanding passing team and rebounding as well. That's going to be a key. And Bill Marquette, 9-1, a big win already over Duke, and a three-guard look. Wisconsin known for cheese and beverages and the swing. Marquette, the guard play, outstanding. They penetrate, they find the bigs, they also can shoot deep. They need an extraordinary game, Sean. Plenty of stars on both sides as we take a look at today's Star Watch. Alondo Tucker for Wisconsin, averaging 19 points per game. The best athlete can play inside and out, three-point range on his shot. Uh, Dominic James got 18 straight against Valpo. Solid performer in the backcourt. They're going to need a big one from him, Sean. Tucker in the lineup with Michael Flowers, Cameron Taylor, Jason Chaplin, Brian Butch, and for Marquette, James with Jarrell McNeil, Wesley Matthews, Usman Barrow, and Dan Fitzgerald. Terrific officiating crew, Ed Hightower with Tim Higgins and Ted Hillary. Marquette in the home white. The home team has won the last five in this rivalry. Chapel jumped for Wisconsin. Barrow for Marquette, and Barrow won the tip. And Sean McDonough and Jay Billis. The Badgers go! Michael Flowers guarding Dominique James. They're going to go right to him. James kicked it out. Wesley Matthews for three. No good. Marquette, despite the three-guard look, not a good three-point shooting team. Under 34% for the year, collectively. Chapel played it back out to Orlando Tucker. Sean Michael Butch. Flowers now. Sorry, Sean. Butch underneath. And he's been inside more often of late. He travels that time with Dan Fitzgerald draped on him. That's a great example of what Wisconsin wants to do in this ballgame. Get into a little high-low and pound it inside. McNeil, the handoff for James, the rookie of the year in the Big East last year, got his own rebound and missed again. Rebounded by Brian Butch, the junior from Appleton. How about that reaction? That kid's got some hops. Taylor missed the three. Two Badgers battling each other for the rebound. And they turned it over. Jarrell McNeil, another sophomore, too strong with a layup. And a foul on Fitzgerald over the back. And guys, both teams look a little jittery here with tremendous anticipation for this matchup. Marquette coached by 40-year-old Tom Crean, already third in wins at Marquette with 150. And, of course, the highlight of his tenure, the trip to the Final Four with Dwayne Wade in 03. And Bo Ryan. In his sixth season as head coach at Wisconsin, they've been in the tournament every year. 2-1-2 trap for Marquette, broken very nicely because they allowed him to split the trap. And the bucket by Orlando Tucker. And Marquette still jittery at the offensive end. And then as Usman Barrow came up with the offensive rebound, he was fouled by Jason Chappell. The counter Wisconsin, you mentioned earlier in the open, the inside game rebounding. Butch has to get some touches. We know he can go outside, but how about the dive there? Were they prepared for that trap? Tucker well, gets right to the rim. And they split the trap. That's what allowed Flowers to get out of it and then create an advantage situation with numbers. 
this Wisconsin team a very good passing team. Their big guys pass the ball as well as their guards do, and that creates some problems for Marquette. They've got to get great pressure on the ball in order to stop this passing team. Barrow made the first free throw. They charged the foul to Butch, his first. One out of two from the line for the junior from Senegal. Went to high school in Chicago. Tucker, the pull up, well short, and the foul on the rebounding action against Fitzgerald as he knocked Butch to the deck. And Fitzgerald is too quick personal. He's starting for just the second game this season. Over their first nine games of the year, Jameel Lott was the starter, but Fitzgerald replaced him in the last ball game against Delaware State, and no question about the foul. Well, Fitzgerald trying to get around in front to deny post position. Then when the shot went up, he found himself on the backside getting boxed out and just tried to fight his way in there and fouled to do it. And so there's two ways to play. Get up in them, which is what Marquette's trying to do, which is going to open up passing lanes, or slough off. Chapel a miss and the rebound down to Marquette and Barrow traveled as he collided with Lazar Hayward who just came into the ball game to take the place of Fitzgerald. Hayward a freshman from Buffalo, New York. Tom Crane and the staff believe he'll be a key player for them when the conference play rolls around in early January. Now you love when guys go after the ball but you got to communicate as well. Marquette doubling when Orlando Tucker gets the ball down in the post. They do not double team very many postmen. Shows the kind of respect they have for Tucker and his game. The shot blocked by McNeil. And out of bounds, last touch by Wisconsin by Michael Flowers. McNeil, one of those guys who fills up every line of the stat sheet. He's the only player in the country with at least 13 points, four rebounds, three assists, and three and a half steals per game. And he just added a blocked shot to his stats for this year. And he had six steals in two games, so he's a pilferer. Wesley Matthews. And the rebound down to Tucker. Tucker, a fifth-year senior out of Lockport, Illinois, the Big Ten preseason player of the year. Bush, the crowd thought he traveled. Tim Higgins did not agree. Chapel had the rebound slapped away. Four on three break for the Golden Eagles. Do you agree? Both teams just seem a little jittery. They're, they're, Marquette's pushing the ball, which is great, but I think they've got to just slow it down. I think they can get what they want. They're rushing things. Yeah, everybody's going a little bit too fast. And you get in this kind of rivalry game with the crowd as hyped up as it is. Both teams ranked right now. It does tend to make you overplay a little bit. Off the inbound play, Matthews, an air ball, out of bounds. Last touch by Taylor. So it'll go back to Marquette. Trailing 2-1, to one, a pitcher's duel, nearly three minutes into the ball game. Lazar Avery got involved in the offensive rebound. A nice-looking player, can put it on the deck. A nice addition to this program. I think Marquette's really got to continue to try to move the ball from side to side. Great pass. Oof. How about the not facing the corner on the inbound defense? Rather faulting. Wesley Matthews, the basket. His dad starred at Wisconsin in the late 70s. Wes Matthews played nine years in the NBA. Wesley grew up in Madison, but chose Marquette over Wisconsin. Butch called for the travel. They don't see the inbounds. You can see just facing out 23 on the baseline, doing a pretty good job, except Taylor gave it up. Yeah, just a little easy back screen by Dominic James. No communication by Wisconsin. That's not good to give up a layup on out-of-bounds underneath situations. Hayward stepped into a three. Jarrell McNeil and oh. a flush by Hayward. Wow. Nobody put a body, but that's what penetration does for you. freshman he played last year at Notre Dame prep in Fitchburg Massachusetts on a terrific high school team Derek character now a freshman at Louisville Paul Harris the outstanding freshman at Syracuse also on that team coached by Bill Barton how'd they ever lose 
Marcus Landry just into the game, missed for Wisconsin. Joe Krabenhoff also just on the floor, had the offensive rebound, then lost the ball. Well, Marquette's okay defensively. I like their activity, but their offense is hard, and both felt that that should have been their ball on that particular play. Boy, Marquette just really goes after the ball. They are so quick on the perimeter. Their inside guys have quick feet as well. And you have got to protect the ball and be strong with it because Marquette is going to slap at it and knock it away. Matthews inside Hayward. And a whistle. They're going to count the original shot by Hayward for a goal 10. Great post pass by Matthews. Lazar Hayward igniting this building with his performance off the bench. The Golden Eagles with the early lead. Jay Billis, Bill Raftree back inside the Bradley Center. Seven unanswered points for Marquette. They lead by five as we go inside the play. Wisconsin's got to do a better job communicating on defense. Marquette running a little play here. They're going to take James, bring him off here, and then set a back pick and get Lazar Hayward into the low post. That is way too easy. Now, they goaltended, but that was going to be a basket no matter what, whether it was Hayward putting it off the glass or Usman Barrow dunking it back in. The, the communication for Wisconsin defensively right now has not been good. That was not good at all. You almost have to switch that particular play, Sean. Well, we spoke with Bo Ryan yesterday. He said he's pleased with the way his team's played, but he's waiting for all the defensive pieces to fit together. He said sometimes one breakdown leads to another. Defensively, that was a good example of what the coach is talking about. Now you see a little 2-3 zone. They're matching up out of this. Marcus Landry. Nice move to the bucket. He's from right here in Milwaukee. Elected to go about an hour away to the University of Wisconsin. But he is married to a senior forward on the Marquette women's basketball team. And they had a daughter arrive earlier in the spring. Traveling the call as McNeil slid in the lane. That last play that Marcus Landry scored on, he showed great patience in the middle of that zone. Right now, Marquette is so hyped up defensively. If you give them a shot fake, or a pass fade. They're, they're jumping for it. And also they're matching up. Now they go straight, man, because Winthrop and Florida State had pro gave them problems with a 2-3 zone. Back to man, Sean. Wisconsin needed overtime to win its last ball game against a very good Winthrop team. They're only lost to Missouri State by two, a game in which Bo Ryan said Missouri State really shot the ball well. Traveling the call against Landry, and of course Marquette coming off a recent defeat against North Dakota State. That club has been a problem for both teams in the Dairy State. They beat Wisconsin last year. Well, Andre Smith with 26 points, and Nelson with a bunch of threes outside. And Winkleman, Tim Miles has a pretty good team. The Bison can play. And Marquette turned them over 25 times, believe it or not. Well, Marquette took a lot of quick shots in that one. They didn't use both sides of the floor. They're looking for that today. They don't want a lot of quick shots. Tom Crean told his team, reverse the ball. We don't want first side shots. And don't think his team's been as patient offensively as the coach would like. Landry, whose brother Carl, is a fine player at Purdue. Handed the ball off to Taylor. He's guarded tightly by David Kubion, who just came into the ball game off the Marquette bench, but not tightly enough. And Cameron Taylor, the senior from Minneapolis, with a bucket. Really the one player on this team that can take you off the dribble, a breakdown guard. It complements that swing. It's the same thought. Kubion, freshman, native of Venezuela, played high school basketball in New Jersey at St. Benedict's for Danny Hurley. Barrow shot blocked. They wanted a goal 10 again, this time against Greg Stevensma. And now the ball held, and on the arrow, it'll go over to the Badgers with a chance to take the lead. Tomorrow night, a great game for our Sunday showdown presented by Alltel Wireless, number 11, LSU against Texas. Chance to see big baby Glenn Davis against the super freshman Kevin Durant. That's at 8 p.m. tomorrow night on ESPN. Durant averaging over 23 per game as a freshman for the Longhorns. He's a special player. And big baby, not quite as big as he was last year. He's lost some weight, much more mobile, and a better overall player because of it. You could try that diet yourself. <laughs> Steve <laughs> with a terrific shot. Look at this dive. Chapel to the rim. Tucker found him. Jason Chapel, a senior from New Berlin, Wisconsin. Played prep at Worcester Academy in Massachusetts. 
And Wisconsin has run off six straight points to reclaim the lead. Well, Wisconsin showing again why they're such a good passing team. Everybody on the Wisconsin team can pass it, especially their big guys. Nice play. Hayward, 4-3. And a great box out by Orlando Tucker. They are solid, Sean. You're right. A good defensive sequence. Tucker led the Big Ten in scoring in conference games last year. At 20 per game, he's the only returning first-team All-Big Ten selection from a year ago, and he does it all, including great leadership for Wisconsin. Now you can see the late double, and nobody rotates underneath, and a terrific read by the big fella. Well, that double was late, and if you are going to go over and double, you've got to get better pressure on Alondo Tucker because he's a good passer as well, and they just picked him apart on the rotation. Foul was on Kubi on his first, a third against Marquette. Trayvon Hughes with the ball now, a freshman from Queens, New York. They make the defense worse as Tucker gets a deep look. Chapel, who fed Tucker, went to crash the boards and had it ripped away from him by Dwight Burke. And there's an injured Wisconsin player behind the play, and the Warrior, uh, excuse me, that's an old habit, the Golden Eagle fans upset. <laughs> But they had a five on four denied by the injury to Michael Flowers. And we watched practice yesterday. It was very physical. Elbow right there. You can see they're just trying to protect the basketball. I think the initial one was inadvertent. Yeah, but nothing you, intentional. You've got to wear a helmet under there. Bo knows being from Chester, PA. He had a couple of tough matches in his day. Actually, in Chester, PA, all his records in high school were broken by one Jameer Nelson. How about that, huh? I don't think he could have guarded Jameer as quick as he is. McNeil, the three starting Marquette guards now, one for 11 combined from the floor. Tucker, and count the basket for Wisconsin off the feed from Trayvon Hughes. Terrific penetration that complements that offense beautifully. Everybody likes to post up with a little hesitation. How about that draw two? And Tucker in position. He's tough around that glass as a finisher, Jay. Well, essentially, that was a transition opportunity for Wisconsin, led by the bad shot by Marquette that started it off. And the first pass in your opponent's fast break is oftentimes a bad shot. Tucker finished the three-point play. He has five. And now that's nine unanswered points for the Badgers. Twelve and a half to go first half. Wisconsin by four. Kubion for three. He's shooting 52% from three for the year. And Todd Crane said during our visit yesterday, we need to get the V more shots. Tough match. Tucker banged a couple of times by Burke. The play on and then Chapel traveled. Well, that's got to be four or five walks early here for Wisconsin. they got to establish that pivot foot and take the hit. It looks like they're trying to be physical and go into the defense, and as a result, they're traveling. Uncharacteristically so, already six turnovers for Wisconsin. They average under 12 per game for the season, and they are plus five and a half per game in turnover margin. Well, the minus one, three in that category today. The one thing, Sean, that Wisconsin doesn't do is they don't have live ball turnovers that you can take the other way. If they do turn it over, you're taking it out of bounds and still having to go against their set defense. And yeah, this is, Marquette's got to run some offense. They are right now. The Ooh, screen down. was open for three and passed it up after he made one a moment ago. Jameel Lott just into the ball game. Another walk. walk. Yep. Wow. Fourth Marquette turnover. Referee's arms are getting tired. <laughs> it's a great Saturday afternoon of college basketball, but tonight all eyes are on New York. And college football is one of the most famous trophies in sports will be handed out. Who will join the elite Heisman fraternity? College football's top individual honor will be awarded tonight. Is it a coronation ceremony for Ohio State's Troy Smith? Or can Brady Quinn of Notre Dame and Darren McFadden of Arkansas add a little intrigue? We'll see tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. 
seems to not be a tremendous amount of suspense, but you never know. Mm -hmm. Troy Smith, the big favorite, but perhaps a surprise in store. Did you do one of their games this year? Yes. Pretty impressive. Player. Yeah. You I don't know if we're allowed to divulge who we voted for, but... You do get a vote? You get a hockey vote? You get an Oscar vote? No, not an Oscar vote, but the... Uh, Nice enough of the uh, folks who run the Heisman Trophy to invite me to vote. It's a great honor. And I'll respect their wishes that we keep our vote secret. And as he can step out, but sure, you saw him inside. What a blockout. So here comes Marquette with a chance to reclaim the lead. Under 11 and a half to go in the first half. Here's Wesley Matthews. Tom Green says he's the complete glue guy on this team. He needed a little more glue on the dribble. Lost it and then committed a foul after it was taken away by Trayvon Hughes. Yeah, they're, they're not themselves right now. They ran a set the last trip. Dribble drive is something when you're you know, trying to make a little bit of comeback. I think they need a ball screen, and also the bigs have to make themselves available underneath. Well, they definitely have to move the ball from side to side to get this Wisconsin defense moving. If you attack it when it's set, you are asking for a turnover. Turnovers from Marquette. The foul on Matthews, his first. Hughes thought about his own shot. And a foul called on Jameel Watt. Nickel Dimer. Six team fouls now. The first on Lott, a senior from St. Paul, Minnesota. Spent some time in junior college at the North Dakota School of Sciences, where he was a star for the Wildcats. Orlando Tucker in the lane. A little kiss. He's got a game. Watched him grow. This is his fifth game against Marquette today, which is intriguing. Yeah, he played a redshirt he... season where he played four games and then was granted a medical redshirt for a foot injury. But one of those four games was against Marquette. This is his fifth meeting, even though they played just once a year. Jarrell McNeil trying to get the shooting going for the three starting guards. That's his first field goal. Well, a terrific shot, but it was against double coverage. That was a really tough shot. Nice pass on the dive there. Raymond Hoff with a terrific look. Butch around the 10, dominating. First bucket for Brian Butch, coming off 17 points, nine rebounds in that narrow win over Winthrop on Monday night. And you can see why Kravenhoff is a playmaking forward. He is another outstanding passer with energy and skill out on the floor. Randall Tucker calls him Mr. Intangibles. Does so much to help the Wisconsin team, does Kravenhoff. Hughes giving them nice minutes off the bench with a rebound in traffic. Tucker, yeah, stop and go oh. to score. Wow, I thought he got grabbed as well. A little kiss at the end. You can see he's stepping out now, showing you a little bit of his form away from the rim. Well, how about the way he put the brakes on, let everybody slide right by? He's what pretty clever. Move. He has nine points. Wisconsin hammering the paint. 16 of their 17 points from the paint. McNeil lost the dribble. Another Marquette turnover as he gave it away to Kravenhoff. In a hurry. Hughes try to get by Kubion and then swatted from behind by Jameel Watt. We're at the sold-out Bradley Center. More than 18,000 on hand in downtown Milwaukee. Just a couple of blocks from the Marquette campus. 113th meeting all time. The Dairy State Showdown. Their first met back in 1917. Bill was there for that one. He's here <laughs> as well with Jay Billis. And yours truly, Sean McDonough. Still toasting the town. By the way, there is a lot of jazz in this town. Getting back to our comment Thursday. Orlando Tucker. Woo. Air ball. Out of bounds to Marquette. Both teams are better than this, don't you think? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's as you notice, like, the rivalry. It's kind of like the early rounds of a big fight. They're kind of feeling each other out a little bit, and there's no question. I think Sean was absolutely right. There's some nerves associated with this guy's going a little bit too fast, but I think they'll calm down and really start playing. Nine minutes to go till halftime. Five point lead for Wisconsin. Matthew slipped in the lane, kept it alive for Dominique James, sophomore from Richmond, Indiana. Nice. Unfortunately, didn't get it through. It's that man, Krabenhoff, again, sophomore from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And Landry with the left. They bite you just enough in the open floor to take advantage. And quick timeout by Tom Crean. 
The Badgers have opened up a seven-point lead, 8.34 to go in the first half. Marquette shooting just 26% from the floor, and they've turned it over seven times. That adds up to a seven-point deficit as they host Wisconsin, 8.34 to go in the first half. One of the problems Marquette has come across is they're taking a lot of contested shots. You mentioned the turnovers. This is a very solid Wisconsin defensive team. They pack it in, make it very difficult for you to get into the lane. Marquette's going to have to hit some shots over the top. And they're going to have to get some points up front. Fitzgerald back last couple of minutes with the two fouls. He's been on the bench. Gerald started the game. He's a transfer from Tulane. Inside they go, and Barrow shot blocked by Landry. Chance to run for Wisconsin. The finger roll. No basket, says Ed Hightower. Was he going to count it and then send it the other way? No. Wiped it out. Pretty good defensive stand, but you can see the difficulty, the easy baskets for both. Both of one referee had it the other way. Get it out of town here, Jay. They are solid, as you noted, defensively. They, they, it's almost like a zone. They move in sequence, and here the step up. It looked like pretty good play defensively. First foul on Flowers, just the second on Wisconsin. Here in the first half. Boy, Wisconsin so physical inside. Look at Krabenhoff. He's just throwing Fitzgerald around. And they screen the screener. They didn't get anything out of it. It was a great reaction defensively. Now James averaged 15 per game last year. The lead Marquette. He's the leading returning scorer in the Big East. And he was 13th in the league in scoring last year with that kind of talent. But the top 12 scores in the Big East from last year all have departed. 11 Big East players drafted in the first 40 selections of the last NBA draft. And look at the shape up in the lane. Too close. And Tucker unlucky. It rattled off. But Flowers is there, and he'll go to the line. Well, you got to get more pressure on the ball. Great passing team, Wisconsin. The free throws after a timeout, and when we come back, we'll talk with one of the brightest stars in the entire sports world, Dwayne Wade of the Miami Heat. We're back at the Bradley Center, the home of the Marquette Golden Eagles. Dwayne Wade played in this rivalry. Air Faggy helped Marquette defeat the Badgers in the 2002 meeting. Dwayne had 25 points, shot 11 of 17 from the field in a 63-54 Marquette win. Later that year, he led Marquette to the Final Four for the first time since 1977. Now a member of the Miami Heat, the MVP of the NBA Finals last spring as he led Miami to the NBA championship and we'll be chatting with Dwayne Wade recently named the Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year in just a moment. First it's Michael Flowers at the free throw line. This is one good basketball player Michael Flowers an outstanding shooter now that he now I say that he misses his free throw but an outstanding shooter and he's probably Wisconsin's best overall defender and a pretty good offensive rebound there too. He'll put back against Winthrop. They're averaging 9.3 per game, but in the last ball game against Winthrop, he had a career-high 21 points. Missed both free throws, but Wisconsin wound up with the second miss. Landry, Fitzgerald backed away a bit with the two fouls. A nice cut to set it up. They're showing poise. Marquette rattled. They've got to pull the plug here, reverse the ball, get some touches low. Landry's given them six points off the bench. McNeil underneath, and Barrow got the roll around the rim. That's you make yourself available. Good activity underneath, but a big fella. Well, it's amazing when you go up with a jump shot, how open people underneath can be. Tom Davis used to run a lob play based on a jump shot. It was like a fake jump mm -hmm. shot, and everybody stops to block out. You wind up getting a lane to the basket. Jarrell McNeil called for his first and the team's eighth, so it's a one and one shooting situation for the Badgers. What a back screen, huh? That great play on the pass, Jay. A little handoff coming right off that into the lane, and Orlando Tucker stepped up. Anytime you help up, you're going to have people open underneath. And you mentioned that Tom Davis, uh, his name, big influence on what some of the things Wisconsin runs. The back screen pop. 
there. Look at Flowers sticking right with Dominique James. James has to be a little more dynamic coming off these pick and rolls and just blast off of them instead of playing with the ball. A little stagger across, get turned and go to the rim. There you go. Deal. Off to Barrow for the dunk. Make yourself available. Smart time and a big guy. Now try to get back into it with Marquette within three now. Six minutes to go in the first half. Now Wisconsin very good at getting the ball to the correct guy and having poise. Wide open three for Cameron Taylor. Everybody's so worried about Alondo Tucker. You let leave Taylor wide open. He's going to drill that all night long. He's a good player. Matthews couldn't answer the three. And another rebound in traffic by Krabenhoff. He is a tough kid, Sean. His father used to say to him, we read the note, get in the barbecue. Mix it up. Flowers missed a running layup. Taylor chopped down. The officials conferring, and I believe they're going to have a foul on Marquette. On yep. Barrow, who hit the deck and chopped down one of the Badgers. And Tom Crean doesn't like it. I think it was the right call. Barrow kind of undercut him and put him down. It was a heck of an open field tackle. That's one of those hustle plays. Unfortunately, he went underneath. I don't know if they should replay those in this building. No. Now, this is an NBA arena. The Bucks and the Golden Eagles share this building. Sometimes when college teams play in an NBA building, you lose the college atmosphere, but not in here. This is a crowd right on top of the action and fully engaged. This See, guy, I, like, I like it when they replay things in the arena. I mean, to what, get the people upset? Well, what's the crowd going to do? When they get a boo? I mean, they boo anyway. Well, the referees can take it. Look, they make the call. We live in an age of technology. We, we should be able to see it in the arena. Oh, oh, and Barrel was his third. He's gone to the bench. Wisconsin just one out of five from the free throw line. Jarring pick sent by Lazar Hayward. James still can't buy a bucket. He's now one for five from the floor. I'll tell you, Marquette's lucky they're only down six. That's very the way fortunate. They played offensively. The jarring pick that occurred comes late, and it's tough to defend, but they still recover. James gets a little bit of a blow. Trying to lead by example. Maybe just back it off a little. And McNeil is so good taking the ball to the basket. Obviously a terrific defender, but a courageous driver to the basket. You have to be officials too, huh? Oh, goodness. Steve's mouth. James will steamroll Wesley Matthews. Eighth turnover committed by Wisconsin. Just the first foul on Butch and only the third team foul against the Badgers. Now, if they replay this in the stands, the refs are going to need an attorney or Steesman might. <laughs> yeah, pretty physical player, good shot blocker underneath. 6'11", 260, a junior out of Randolph, Wisconsin, where he played on three Division IV state championship teams. I think he got a piece of that too, Sean. And then Kravenhoff cleared, and now Trayvon Hughes trying to set up the Badger swing offense. Kravenhoff, the lengthy miss. A good box out by Marquette. And Kubion led the break. He has it back. He's out of control. And he got fouled. That's one area where I think Wisconsin can be a little bit vulnerable. That's in transition defense. They do not run back as well right now as I think they're capable of. Florida State really exploited that, although Florida State got beat by 15 up in Madison. Yeah, it's interesting. You have all this speed on Marquette, and I think they're misusing it. You know, you don't have to go in overdrive all the time. Just back it off a little, little hesitation, and be patient on the reversal. Foul on Krabenhoff, his first. Saw Dominique James. He's one for five from the floor. There are other two brilliant sophomore guards, McNeil and Matthews, a combined two for 11. As a trio, they're three for 16. And when that happens, Marquette is going to be trailing. Mm -hmm. Relicson, another big body out there. That's too easy. But James could not score underneath. 
the big guy again. Looming there, getting a little action. Steamsmith's done a nice job. He's been a presence on the offensive end, and defensively, he has blocked and changed a lot of shots. Now, here's where he's a very good passer. That's a great little screen on the box. You get it to the elbow. Gorgeous. Look. By Steamsmith. Oh, Ryan talked about a good job. There's big men do a passing. Basically, they have five men who are sharing the minutes among the bigs very unselfishly. Bo Ryan, so those five just ask, what do you want me to do, coach? Mm -hmm. And this is the play they ran earlier, getting Hayward to the block. Too much dribble. Yep. By McNeil. Matthews with 10 on the shot clock. Wide open from the free throw line. And finally... The guards get one to go. Wesley Matthews, the sophomore. Mr. Basketball in Wisconsin out of Madison Memorial, where he won a state championship as a senior. And a steal by Matthews. Has help with him. Powers to the bucket and got fouled by Gullickson. Seldom do you see a sloppy pass on the perimeter with Wisconsin, but one of these plays leads to an open floor opportunity. All right, that is a distinguished cast indeed. We'll look forward to it. Here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin with a four-point lead over its in-state rival Marquette. I can't remember a time when I've seen Wisconsin turn the ball over this much, and you rarely see him turn it over in a live ball situation where the opponent can take it the other way for an easy one. You're absolutely right. I mean, they're so solid, basically fundamental on both ends of the floor. Nine turnovers committed by Wisconsin turned into nine Marquette points. The free throw cap, the old-fashioned three-point play for Wesley Matthews. This is where they post different people. It's tough. As you would say, Bill, a neck ball. A neck ball leading to a jump ball, possession arrow. You know, it's very hard for guards to defend on the box. They're so uncomfortable. It was a good pull of the string there by Bo to slip the point guard down on James. We mentioned we were going to speak with Dwayne Wade. Yeah, we had Dwayne actually on hold waiting to join us on the air. He needed to take an incoming call, said he'd get back to us. We haven't heard back from him yet. So we do hope to speak with Dwayne Wade for those of you who are hanging, waiting for the great star to join us. That happens to you a lot. Uh, bigger, <laughs> bigger name on the other line on Sean McDonough. Is... Darrell McNeil called for an offensive foul. Tom Crane didn't like it. Tim Higgins shot Crane a look that got the coach to pipe down. Second foul now on Jarrell McNeil, an excellent defense by Hughes, who has impressed me, the freshman, in my first time watching him in person. You know, Wade could have gotten another reward while he was waiting. Well, the Sports Illustrated Man of the Year, you never know who's calling. Best dressed. 50 most beautiful people, narrowly edged me off that list. <laughs> you were under consideration. Box to box with Tucker, and they come late with the double. Tucker gave it out to Landry. And the scrum. And it's Hayward. Oh, bad, bad pass. pass. Didn't get enough on it to get it to James, and it's stolen by that man Hughes again. That's where you have to get it to a guard right out of the gate. Ooh, Oops. another one. Yep, there we go again. Greg Steamsma. Steamrolling another defender. His second foul, Camille Lott took the hit. Bo Ryan didn't like that call. See, that's funny. A lot of coaches don't like their big guys to get it that far from the floor, but they've had unbelievable success having people poised, make the entry pass, and not swing the arms. Well, I, I think that that foul was committed at, by virtue of the first one. The first one was a, was legit. a legit elbow. That one wasn't as big a deal. I mean, that, that was sold by the defender, and very intelligently so. Spoken by a man who's thrown a few elbows, I might add. Yeah, I'd like to throw a few right now. Yeah. <laughs> and Bill has bent a few. <laughs> In this town, it does happen. Six team fouls on Wisconsin, so the bonus on the next. But we're down to a minute 39 to go in the half. Nice. Kubion, strong to the basket, then missed a left-handed layup. Hughes the other way. Tucker. Take it off the floor by Matthews with the push. Looks like he got fouled. James for three. 
Tapped out by Flowers. Now the Badgers look to break back. Now this is Marquette's ball. And Hughes call for a charge. They've yep. got to pull the string, Sean. They, they, you can't get into this kind of a game when you're so sound on the offensive end. Well, you got to use in transition like that the free throw line as a stop sign. If Hughes stops at the free throw line, the entire floor would have opened up for him. 11 turnovers for Wisconsin. They average 11.9 per game. They've had nearly that many in less than a half. Hughes called for the foul. And you can pull up for a short jumper. That's still a good shot because you've got rebounding coverage. But also, James would have to come out to you if you stopped at the free throw line. First foul on Trayvon Hughes. He's got a St. John's Northwest Academy here in Wisconsin, originally from Queens, New York. He was also the quarterback of his high school football team last season in the league offensive player of the year. Matthews a miss. Two hundred minutes to go in the half. Too many tough shots for Marquette. Space dribble. Just should have kicked it. Grabbing Hoff, defended tightly by Lott. Tucker, there's a flop. And then Tucker lost the ball out of bounds. Good not call as well. Uh, this Wisconsin team, they are very proficient at feeding the post. The old bowling pass that Tom, Tom Davis, Davis made famous. Bo Ryan, longtime coach at University of Wisconsin, Platteville, 15 years as a D3 power under Ryan. That's the alma mater of Dr. Tom Davis, and Bo Ryan says he's learned a lot about his basketball coaching and philosophy from Tom Davis, particularly about how to get up after your players one moment and then pat them on the bat the next, and Bo certainly can do both. Jamil Watt finally finishes, and a foul, a chance to tie it up for Marquette. Well, that's a tough sequence for Wisconsin. Uh, I thought it was goaltending initially, and then the offensive foul by Marquette, and now they get a three-point play out of it. Yeah, Marquette fortunate they didn't get an offensive yeah. foul on Hayward there, but a nice job by Lott, sticking with it and grabbing that offensive rebound and finishing the play. But you're right, Bill, I thought that was a goaltend as well. And actually, Wisconsin probably would have been better off if it were called. It would have saved them a foul and a three-point opportunity. Landry called for the foul as first. Lot with a chance to tie it, 64% for the year from the line. And a clanger taken off the iron by Tucker. And Bo Ryan will use a timeout to set up what he hopes to be the final shot and score of the half. Now Jay made the point earlier, Marquette is very fortunate. And they really have not played well. Uh, they think they've been too jacked up. They're in touch now. And this is a big halftime talk in preparation for Tom Green, well, I think. They haven't played well offensively. They've played very well on mm -hmm. the defensive end because this Wisconsin team, uh, just a couple possessions ago, we were shooting 50% in this game, but they turned it over nine or ten times. That's I mean, killed them. And I think Marquette's rebounding has been pretty solid against what I consider to be a better rebounding team in Wisconsin. Wisconsin can rebound the ball. Wisconsin's turned it over 12 times. But Marquette has not capitalized. They've shot 31%. Tomorrow night, our Sunday showdown presented by Alltel Wireless number 11 LSU against the Texas Longhorns. LSU 5-1, Texas 5-2, big baby Glenn Davis averaging nearly a double-double, just under 20 points per game and just under 10 rebounds. That's the Sunday Showdown tomorrow night at Eastern Time on ESPN. What do you look for in this last possession of the half, the Badgers hope? Well, out of a timeout, I think you have to watch first for a lob for Alondo Tucker, but they're going to try to get the ball to Tucker, I think, on the low box. I would agree. And maybe some dribble drive from Taylor. Taylor gave it to Flowers. Tucker the screen and roll. And the pull up with three seconds to go. Chance for a heave from three-quarter court for Matthews. And he just missed. James struggled. While Tucker was outstanding in the first half, the bucket with three seconds to go gives Orlando Tucker 13 points in the first half. Badgers with the lead at the break. Now Reese Davis in the studio with the UPS Halftime Report.
Sean McDonough with Bill Raftery and Jay Billis back at the Bradley Center. Just when you thought Jay Billis' head couldn't get any bigger. <laughs> <laughs> we have these cutouts. Welcome back. I thought they weren't allowed any obscene signs in here. <laughs> My red nose is for the, the cold weather. <laughs> I know uh, Tom Crean, for sure, hopes the basket looks a little bit bigger than usual for this team in the second half. Marquette shot very poorly in that first half. They did. They didn't execute offensively, but I thought their defense was pretty good, holding a, a very good Wisconsin team to only 28 points in the first half. They've got to get a better handle on Alondo Tucker. He was 6 of 10 in that first half for 13 points. You know, I, I would think Wisconsin, if they play slower, it's going to be to their advantage. Don't get in the up and down. The woo-woo basketball. Play some half court. I think Marquette's just got to relax. Tone it down a little bit, Sean. Wisconsin shot 45%. The turnovers hurt them. They committed 12. The edge, as you would expect, in the paint to the Badgers. And the Marquette starting guards... Dominic James, Jarrell McNeil, Wesley Matthews, as you saw, combined 5 4 23. I knew Manny and Mo were. I wasn't sure, sure who Curly was. Nice back screen. And the pass too high. 13th turnover as Chapel did not connect with Tucker. Here's Dominic James for Marquette with Dan Fitzgerald, Usman Barrow, Jarrell McNeil, and Wesley Matthews. Matthews with the ball now for the Golden Eagles. Barrow's pass deflected up off the rim by Butch. Tucker ahead of the field. Whew. What an outlet. And the elevation had sent it in. And Marquette ran some nice stuff and had an open receiver. Unfortunately, a bad pass. Well, you got to be stronger with the ball. This is a big Wisconsin team. They're physical. And they always seem to keep their hands up and get a deflection in a passing lane. Matthews guarded by Tucker. Fitzgerald crashed the board and kept it alive for a moment, but it wound up with Cameron Taylor. Taylor with Michael Flowers, the starting backcourt for the second half for Wisconsin, with Jason Chappell, Brian Butch, and Orlando Tucker. Chappell passed out. And Taylor's jumper wouldn't go foul on the rebounding action on Brian Butch. Now they do a nice job loading up. Brian Butch unfortunately caught. But here's a great dive to the rim and just an inadvertent pass leading to an easy deuce at the other end by one of the better performers in the country. Did you notice on the other end when Wisconsin had the ball in that last possession when Jason Chappell came off that little flex cut, how big he gets in there and calls for the ball? That's one thing Wisconsin does so well. They post hard, get the ball inside, and then kick it out, making the defense really have to work. And he's a good passer. And Fitzgerald having trouble getting untracked. A zip in the first, and he's got to contribute for this team, Sean. They travel. Fitzgerald, a junior from St. Paul, Minnesota. Played one year at Tulane and transferred to Marquette in his second year playing here. Chapel makes himself big inside again. He's 6'10", 245 pounds. He has four points and the lead back up to seven for Wisconsin. Their largest lead was eight in the first half. Just went right into Usman Barrow's chest, knocked him back and created the space. And as McNeil drove, a foul called by Ed Hightower. Maybe Taylor there with a little small change on the bounce. They have to create offense in the low box with the dribble. That's awfully difficult against a terrific defensive team. First foul on Taylor. Second here in the half for Wisconsin. James ripped the ball away and finally gets the ball to roll in. He was one for eight from the floor before that one found the mark. Four points for the sophomore. What a tough kid. Oh, Wisconsin getting killed on out-of-bounds underneath. Tucker and this Chapel at his fingers on the rebound but couldn't control it. Then Barrow. Offense underneath. Yeah. He hit Flowers with an elbow. Timmy Higgins a little slow with the whistle, but... Well, he should have swallowed it. That that was with all the elbows that have flown in this game. That's a guy who's trying to protect the ball after grabbing a rebound. If you don't want to get an elbow, don't go after a rebound once it's grabbed. They're they're reaching in. Guys reach in on both sides. The big guys have to be allowed to protect the ball. And that's a big call because it's also the fourth foul on Usman Barrow. Talking last night with Jason Rabideau, Tom Crean's assistant, said Barrow's been their most improved player. Young man who has not played a lot of basketball in his life. Coming from Senegal, there's a three for Cameron Taylor. 
He led all scores in this battle last year. He had 18 points against Marquette up in Madison in the Badgers' win. Eight-point lead for Wisconsin, matching their largest, and Tom Crean is called for a timeout. Wisconsin leads by eight, matching the Badgers' largest lead of the ball game. 17 and a half to go here in downtown Milwaukee tonight. In New York, the best player in college football will be honored. The Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Nissan. 8 p.m. tonight right here on ESPN, followed by the premiere of Ali Rapp. Troy Smith, the favorite. Brady Quinn and Darren McFadden have also made the trip. Of course, Tom Crean married into one of the premier football families in this country. His beautiful wife, Joni, is the sister of Jim Harbaugh, the terrific quarterback, now an outstanding coach at the University of San Diego, John Harbaugh. Jim and Joni's brother, special teams coach with the Philadelphia Eagles and a hot head coaching prospect at the moment. And Jack Harbaugh, the dad, won a national championship at Western Kentucky in Division I AA as the head coach. Dominique James with six points now. And Joni knows her hoops, too, when you talk to her. You love to score off the timeout. Here's that matchup zone now. Wisconsin's had trouble against a couple of zones. Look at this. Now with a guy like Tucker. Orlando Tucker doing it all for Wisconsin. He has 17 points, a season high, 26. And that was in their loss to Missouri State. The answer at the other end by James, who's starting to find the mark. Little frisky on the reach in. Out of bounds. Last touch by James. The Badgers wanted a reach in foul against Dominique. Orlando Tucker on that drive against the zone. Brian Bush did a really good job of screening off lot so he couldn't get down to cut off that baseline. That's where the size of this Wisconsin team can really wear on you. Looks like straight up man now, Sean. Zach Hayward, as you saw, checked back in for the Golden Eagles. 16 and a half minutes to go. Wisconsin by six. Chapel quickly into Butch. Lot bodying up on him. Barrow out of the ball game for Marquette with four fouls. And as a result, perhaps Wisconsin continues to have its way inside. They could not convert. A lot too high for James from McNeil. Four on one. You've got to get something simple when you're behind. I know we can electrify and excite. Right now they need baskets. Yeah, throwing a lob to a 5'11 guy, no matter how big his vertical is, is not the right play. Thirteen turnovers apiece now. Trayvon Hughes returns for the Badgers. You know, one of the problems with that kind of play, Bill, is it kind of takes the air out of your team. It's a little bit of a deflating play to work that hard. You know, essentially dodge a bullet on the offensive glass, bring it down, and then pitch it away. Blow it, really. Back to that 2-3 again. Orlando Tucker's gone to the bench for a brief breather for Bo Ryan. Flowers to Krabenhoff. Now inside Marcus Landry, and he got bodied up and fouled by Jameel Lott. Yeah, they're good at getting it inside. Second foul on Lott. Second on the team and a timeout. We're back inside the Bradley Center. Sean McDonough with Jay Billis. And the star of Dude, Where's My Car? Part 2, Bill Raftery. The star of this ball game is Orlando Tucker. Orlando Tucker, so athletic and so good off the dribble. He's 8 for 14 for 17 points thus far in the game and has almost been the entire offense for this Badger team. And he's great at using the glass, whether it's a spin with some English or the little side jumper. It's just 308 points. Trouble getting it in at a timeout called by Wisconsin. Tucker needs 308 points for the rest of this season, which he should get easily on this pace, to become the second player in Wisconsin history to reach 2,000. Michael Finley, the other, he completed his brilliant career at Madison with 2,147 points. Tucker, the best team leader that Bo Ryan says he has coached. 
a young man who grew up in tough circumstances in Lockport, Illinois, remembers seeing gang shootings and slayings right outside his house. One time a bullet coming into his house. Says he'd like to someday, after a career in the NBA, build a community center back in his hometown to help those who are in similar circumstances to that which he endured when he was a young boy. Now, Lando Tucker may not be a great shooter or classified as such, but he's one of those guys that just knows how to get the ball into the basket. And you mentioned the leader. You know, Devin Harris was a guy that just played. He was certainly a great talent. And Tucker, a little more outspoken. Landry, the leaner. Now, how do you think his wife is going to feel? Landry's wife, who's a basketball player on the Marquette women's team. I mean, he's doing a lot of damage to her school's men's team right now. Well, I guess he's going to TV dinners, I guess. <laughs> Which we're all used to. Lead back to eight, four, Wisconsin. James, a runner that wouldn't go. Bodies fly again and a foul, either on Lott or Matthews, as they combine to knock down Krabbenhoff. Trying to out-jump on a jump shot is very tough. Hit that lane a little bit too deep. Got to have some alternate plans. Yeah, that's where his middle game has improved greatly, but when he beats you off the dribble, trying to score over this big Wisconsin defense, that is a tall order. Two fouls now on Wesley Matthews of Marquette. They really keep the floor spread nicely, don't they? And they run that baseline too. Hide the seat below with Flowers. Who get an offensive rebound as well. A oh. runner and it goes for Taylor. They're picking the zone apart. Even though it is zone, you've got to match up. You can't let the guy turn the corner that easily. And plus, you're giving a very good passing team complete vision. They move it from side to side, make that defense move, and then pick you apart. Neal dished it to the wing. Hayward couldn't get the three to fall. And a nice rebound in traffic by the 6-2 Flowers. And see what they're doing now. They're going to get get it over. They know they can run their offense and usually a touch low. Javi Kubian getting ready to check back in for Marquette. Blocked by McNeil as he rejected Krabenhoff. James blocking foul called against Wisconsin on the baseline. It's against Michael Flowers. With Kubion getting ready to come back in. And Second a, foul committed by Flowers. As a coach, you got to love that defense, though. I mean, even though it's against him, great support on the baseline drive. Wisconsin's rotations have really improved after the first like quarter of this ball game when they weren't very good and they have gotten very good in the second half. McNeil pulls it out. He was a member of the all-rookie team in the Big East last year along with Dominic James and Matthews badgered on the dribble and foul. It's on Flowers. Foul trouble blooming for him. Three. You know, when you dribble the ball, everybody has vision and in position. When you pass the ball, you have to force adjustments. And Marquette's not able to do that because of the, I think, just bouncing it too much. Despite the coaching that we saw yesterday, coaches imploring the team to reverse the basketball, mm -hmm. keep it moving. This is a good play. And, and Fitzgerald gets the shot to drop. His first point. Crowd out of it. So electric at the start. But Wisconsin has lulled the Golden Eagles fans to sleep. You know what took them out of it a little bit was that lob play they couldn't complete. Yep. And a foul called as the ball went into Tucker along the side of the lane. He was double teamed and hit hard. Now you mentioned practice yesterday. I just think they do a great job with your screening and getting themselves set. Here, fit down. You just slip to the box or re reload as they reset. And just a nice, easy basket. I mean, it looks simple, but maybe to do it early on, you can only settle for the dribble drive late. Three fouls now on Jarrell McNeil. Four team fouls on Marquette here in the second half. James tipped that into the backcourt. Good call. Did it hit Wisconsin? Yes, it did hit Cameron Taylor on the way out of bounds. It'll be Marquette basketball. Boy, can Dominique James get off the floor? 
Uh, should we reconsider that lob, maybe? Oh. <laughs> uh, right here, spoke great with call. Tom Crean yesterday. The first thing he said about James was he is an incredible athlete. Mm -hmm. Oh, steps. Goodness. Too much of a hurry. Yep. Catch, the face the defense, and read it. By the way, Ted Hillary got that double tick. I mean, guy's still on top of his game. Maybe he can help you find your car. <laughs> That's for another night. <laughs> Tucker. Lost it. Looked around, expecting a whistle. James guarded by Hughes, and they call James for the foul. The crowd thought it was a flop by Hughes. It's the first foul on Dominic James and the 15 foul against Marquette. We're at the sold-out Bradley Center, 113th meeting all-time in this in-state rival. The Derry State Showdown, Wisconsin and Marquette. Home team has won the last five, but it's the visiting Badgers leading by eight here in downtown Milwaukee as we come down here. 13 minutes to go. The crowd thought the flop should have gone the other way when James went flying and did not get the call. And now a foul on McNeil, his fourth, and he had to be held back by Wesley Matthews from going after Ed Hightower and getting a technical that would send him out of the ball game. They got to settle down. No question about it. A good sub here. Uh, Tom Green trying to calm him down. I can't believe the defensive position trying to stay with James on the other end. And the, the leg work and the balance that you must maintain to draw that charge is extraordinary. So McNeil to the bench with four fouls. Barrow's been on the pine for a while for Marquette with four. Tucker shut off by Matthews. Butch had to go off his feet. He was trying to get the ball in, get a timeout. And it's a held ball, says Tim Higgins. It'll go over to Marquette. Well, they got to make it an ugly game right now, Marquette. I think they got to knock it loose, scrap, get on top of it. And Bo not happy with his guys there. He wants the ball passed. He's in the field of doing that. Well, neither team really moving the ball and moving the defense. But there is a long way to go mm -hmm. in this. If you can drill a shot or two, you're right we've there. We've got a completely different game. Matthews with James, Fitzgerald, Hayward, and Kubayan on the floor for Tom Crean. 12 to shoot. Under 12 and a half minutes to go. Fitzgerald Pretty. strong. Hayward. What a great call from the bench. The high five, pick and roll. A terrific read by Fitzgerald. Here comes the crowd again. Taylor trying to turn James. Couldn't get away. Tough contested shot. Rebound Hayward. Kubayan. Hayward. The tip by Matthews and the rebound. Tucker. Another opportunity for Marquette to keep momentum, get closer, keep the crowd in it. They oh. wander it, and Tucker answers at the other end for the Badgers. Oh, how, the, about, how about that first step? Gorgeous! Blow by! That's amazing, Sean. Lightning. 19 for Tucker. That's his average. Fitzgerald misses a three. Taking down to 11 minutes to go. Hughes fouled by Hayward. He went right around Fitzgerald. What a great hesitation move by Hughes. <laughs> Terrific handle. Well, the crowd was fully engaged, and Marquette an empty trip. And Tucker says, pipe down, Golden Eagle fans. minutes to go. Wisconsin with an eight-point lead. The Badgers 19 and 12 a year ago. Nine and seven in the Big Ten for fourth place with, with 10 of their top 11 players back. Bo Ryan's team picked second in this year's preseason Big Ten poll behind Ohio State. They seem to have a lot of the parts to have a big year. They don't go away either. Both ends of the floor, they're so sound. They haven't gotten rattled. Uh, Poise, you mentioned he's had four NCAA championships. Three? 
No, four. Yeah. Okay. The Division three level. Mm -hmm. Trayvon Hughes makes the free throw, his first point. He's been active on both ends of the floor. Four rebounds, a couple of steals. Just the seventh and eighth free throws of the season. He's now six out of eight from the line. The lead back up to ten, under 11 minutes to go. Wisconsin basically put a great steal by Hughes. He's had some game. Nice and hustle. Matthews stripped it back and knocked it out of bounds. Very feisty performance there. You can't reveal the basketball against Wisconsin. They are just in position with their feet. And how about that recovery, Jay? Well, Wesley Matthews not giving up, showing the speed his mother has. Pam Moore, track star, Wisconsin. She won 11 Big Ten titles in track during her career. Two times an All-American. Pam Moore, Wesley Matthews' mom, recently inducted in the University of Wisconsin Athletic Hall of Fame. We mentioned despite the heritage in Madison at the University of Wisconsin, he chose the Wesley Matthews to come to Marquette. He said, I grew up neutral in this rivalry. Deep three. James, another miss. And they let him know when he played up there, though. Oh, yeah. Ravenhoff, the healthy pick of James, and then Butch could not handle it on the low block. Sean, 17th do you, turnover. Do you remember the conversation we had with Bo yesterday in the car coming up about yes. the, is, the turnover ratio? <laughs> I do. It was early in the day. <laughs> but he said, well, we do reinforce it, and he is shaken, I think, by their inability to handle the basketball. Like the unusually high number of turnovers, the 10-point lead. Fitzgerald, short arm that one. Hayward has been outstanding off the bench. You mentioned Jason Rabbit, the assistant coach of Marquette, said he could be a starter by the time the conference season begins, and you can understand why, mm -hmm. watching Lazar Hayward play today. Well, he's athletic, and boy, can he shoot it from deep. Eight points and six rebounds, and counted at the other end for Joe Krabenhoff. Uh, you had mentioned earlier, Jay, the ability to screen off. Butch does a great job, and Krabenhoff likes to stick his nose in here. Now, Butch just circles Fitzgerald out of the play, and the little scrape and bump, and the ability to knock it down. Second foul on Hayward. That's also a freshman mistake by Hayward, giving up the baseline. That was way too easy. Krabenhoff, such a good passer, so fundamentally sound. And he's also an enforcer out on the floor, so physical. They're on the Big Ten All-Freshman team last season when he averaged three and a half points and four rebounds per game. Former Gatorade State Player of the Year in South Dakota. Wisconsin three out of eight from the line now with the Krabenhoff miss. Now look at the show here, and they get the switch they want. James bounces to the bucket. Out the foul. Count the basket and the foul. He'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Pretty good poise behind the screen, wasn't it? Split the defense. Just bounces off people. Kravinov did a nice job of hedging hard, but he allowed him to split it. Landry comes over to try to take the charge, and James just elevates over him and bounces right off. Second foul on Landry, fifth team foul. This is definitely an area where James could improve free throw shooting, only 64%. Last season as a freshman, 64 again this year. He made it, he has 11. And Marquette within seven, 9.20 to go. Tucker alone underneath. Wow, that's a rookie mistake. Nobody covered the basket. And Zarr's gotta be the guy on the wing to get down there. Approaching nine minutes to go. If you're Tom Crean, would you consider getting McNeil and Barrow back into this ball game with their four fouls apiece? No, uh, they may be waiting for that next time out. Uh, yes, now. Landry swatted the shot of James. Marquette's drives have been all off of one pass. They need to move the ball from side to side, reverse it, and then attack off the dribble so they can attack a closeout. We mentioned last year Wisconsin were 19 and 12, but at one point they were 14 and 2. Then they were without Landry and Steams in the second semester for academic eligibility issues. Nice block again by Landry. We are seeing all-out hustle 
Landry. You can see how important Landry is. I mean, oh. They went five and ten without he and Steams at the end of last season. Well, he just never gave up on that play. And a terrific athlete as well. Great hustle play by Wesley Matthews. Kubion out ahead. Tries to use the rim, but Landry blocked that shot with his left hand. And stylish glasses, too. <laughs> I thought he should have extended with the layup on the same side, but I think the defensive maneuver was just extraordinary. I like to see a guard take the ball in, square up, maybe give a shot fake and let the defense fly by, then try to get the three-point play. You mentioned earlier Marcus Landry's brother, Carl, a terrific player at Purdue, big reason why they have high expectations this year, and their sister, Shanita, plays at Temple for Don Staley's Lady Owls. Tough match over here if he backs him down. Let's see if he does. Nice hands. That's off of Tucker. I think he should have given up gone right to the yeah, box. Gone right into the post. Right. He essentially posted him up out on the wing. Yeah. But then he tried to put the ball down between his legs here. And that's when you're really giving the advantage to Kubion, who is strong, has very good hands, and is solid defensively. He becomes the king once you put it on the deck. Well, McNeil is back in the ball game now for Marquette, playing with four fouls. James, again, a lot of dribbling out to Hayward, an open three. Kubion got away with it. McNeil foul from behind by Taylor. Well, they don't lack effort. I'll give Marquette that. They're not totally on their game, but intense. For a team that is so perimeter-oriented, Marquette is not a good three-point shooting team. They're down by nine. You notice how he brightens up with anything pertaining <laughs> to Massachusetts. You would have run for Congress up there. Jarrell McNeil. Missed the free throw. Then nobody would be here to keep you two out of trouble. <laughs> it's my own effort of public service. Oh, boy. They can't afford to have that happen. Two misses by McNeil. A 67% free throw shooter. Both teams bad from the line. Marquette three out of seven. Wisconsin three for eight. Let's see how many fouls there have been in the game. There haven't been a lot of free throw attempts. And they got, they're got running their swing now. A little late with the help. Nice lob. Tucker does it all. Landry accommodates. Ten points for Marcus Landry. Well above his season average of four a game coming in. Wisconsin really makes every player on the floor play post defense, mm -hmm. and you're going to find a weak defender sooner or later. Just uncomfortable for a lot of people. This is the largest lead now for the Badgers, and Hughes nearly had the steal, then got a bit greedy and got called for the foul and the reach in on McNeil. Uh, when you have a good college player, they really understand what pass to make. Here we got this. We're going to have a front down in here. And Tucker, no wasted movement. No dribble. Makes everybody stay honest. Yeah, Fitzgerald just got out of position there. He should have stayed in the middle of the lane, and having him in the middle on help side defense probably would have discouraged that pass from the beginning. And if you discourage a pass, it's just as good as denying it. So here comes Usman Barrow back into the ball game with four fouls. McNeil made the front end of the one and one. Foul on Hughes was the eighth team foul against Wisconsin here in the second half. Neal, one out of five from the floor. James is five out of 15. Matthews, three for 11. They are the three stars for Marquette. In that three guard look. They've all had a bad shooting day today. How about five? Get it off the floor. My goodness. Five second call as Kubion did a great job defending. We spoke with Jason Rabideau yesterday. He mentioned that he had spoken with Kelvin Sampson, the coach at Indiana not long ago. And Coach Sampson cut up all of Kubion's appearances in the games against Texas Tech and Duke Ooh. because he wanted to show his players wow. the kind of energy a guy like Kubion can bring to the game. Of course, the highlight of the season so far for Marquette, those back-to-back -back wins over Texas Tech and Duke. That's to make you feel pretty good as a coach when you he beat Bob and Mike Krzyzewski on back-to-back -back ball games. McNeil, the pull-up, he has six, well below his average of 14 per game, but 
The Golden Eagles trying to scratch back closer again. This is where they have to go to Orlando Tucker. And they do with Fitzgerald guarding and now Barrow doubling. Now Barrow's got a release. Goodness, once he dribbles away and drags you. This is the poise they have. Well, they got Landry with a mismatch. Landry has Kubi on guarding him. Instead, it's a tough pull oh. that goes for Cameron Taylor. Wow. Dagger. Whenever they get in trouble, they like the ball screen for Taylor. And he knows how to score. Great touch. He averages 12 per game. He has 12 today. A little flare screen. And nobody underneath. McNeil fouled on a reach in by Kravenhoff. His second. Now they gave it to Orlando Tucker. His first. It's amazing. Orlando Tucker's only got 10 fouls on the season. Is that good or bad? Well, well you think I, they it's hide hard him? to tell. You think they hide him maybe on a, a I, less than talented offensive guy? Or well, do you just think he's smart? I, I think it's a combination of things. I mean, I, do, I don't think it's that he doesn't guard people. I think he does guard pretty well. I don't think he's a great defensive player, but the one that's even more stunning, I mean, looking at their stats, is uh, Cameron Taylor coming into this game had two fouls in nine games. Now, you would be the type of guy, since you fouled out most often, to look at that stat. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I, I actually guarded somebody. I wasn't playing dodgeball. <laughs> you no. did have Samson comes to mind, right? Well, he he throws by McNeil, seven-point game. The crowd trying to convince itself to get involved again. Five and a half minutes to go. And Tucker knows how to ride a guy out of that box area. Guarded now by Matthews. Tucker, tough shot. Big-time performer. He's having a ball. Sweet music right now. Well, he's having fun, but it's yep. no fun to guard him. Man, is he a good player. Watch yourself. 100th career start today for Tucker as a Wisconsin Badger in a memorable performance. James for three. They just can't get anything off their defense, Marquette. Good pressure release by Wisconsin. Good ball reversal, and they use a lot of clock when necessary. 14 points for James. That was his first three of the ball game in four tries. Tucker guarded again by Matthews. Landry with Barrow defending. Four and a half to go. Wide open. Flowers quiets the crowd with a three. Woo. Drive and draw. A little of their own medicine there. First point for Flowers, and then James can't get it to roll in. Boy, the dilemma of helping off a three-point shooter. Flowers an outstanding shooter. In fact, he shoots the ball so much in practice that he has calluses on the tips of his fingers. Assistant coach Gary Close said that the only guy he can remember having that same thing was B.J. Armstrong at Iowa. Here's the drive, the ability to collapse the defense. And you see the reaction, and oh my goodness, the little nylon on the kick out. James misses the first free throw, fading away from the line a bit as he shot. Fitzgerald goes out for Dwight Burke. And Landry gets a seat. Jason Chapel back in. Landry's done a good job in this game. One out of two for James, who broke Doc Rivers, Marquette freshman scoring record last year. Oh, bigger body down there on the box area. On Tucker. Tucker, Burke trying to defend. Burke a little early in the air for the rebound, and it wound up with Krabenhoff, the big development. Well, they had the opportunity, but he comes up with all the loose balls they feel. Matthews shut off by Chapel. Matthews with Chapel on him again, and a blocking foul on Chapel. Well, just when it seems Marquette might make it a very tight game, Wisconsin comes up with big buckets, including several today from their star, Lando Tucker. Still a 10-point margin with 3.42 to go.
history on the verge of being made there and history at the Bradley Center here today. The attendance, 19,020. That is the largest crowd ever to see a college basketball game in the state of Wisconsin. You know what it reminds me of? When Al McGuire was the coach here, he wouldn't come out until every seat was taken at the Mecca. I had the same problem at Seton Hall, too. Because so you never play. Yeah, it would never come out. But uh, what... The Hall of Famer, just an outstanding coach and one of the great guys and color analyst yes. I've ever met. Pardon me, Jake. Well, your problem <laughs> at Seton Hall was the fans were wishing that someone else was sitting in your seat. <laughs> Wesley they, Matthews they got at the free throw line. Yes, they did. And we're delighted that you're sitting here upright with us. Eight-point game, 3.40 to go, nine points for Wesley Matthews. Well, you don't want to take it down there, that's trouble. And batted out by McNeil, who is the nation's leader in steals entering today's action. 39 steals through the first 10 games of the year for Jarrell McNeil. He gets so many deflections. Terrific athlete. Yes. Matter of fact, they chart deflections. He has averaged McNeil 12.2 per game this season. That is the record for a season. And Dwayne Wade has it. We apologize that we have not heard back from Dwayne Wade. We were anticipating a phone conversation with the great star, but apparently that other call he had to take was important. Now they leave Tucker on the nice extra pass. And a three at the shot clock buzzer. Wouldn't drop for Flowers. Down by eight, the Golden Eagles. Three minutes to go. McNeil scores. Like Dwayne Wade, he's out of Chicago, Illinois. Six-point game. Got to help. Tucker got bumped by Matthews as he started to drive. It was either going to be that or a carry because after the contact... Tucker palmed the ball, but the foul came first, and it's the third against Wesley Matthews. So difficult to contain off the bounce, even by a smaller, relatively quicker defender. He's explosive oh, and strong. What a player. Tucker makes the front end of a one and one. That was the ninth team foul against Marquette, so it'll be the double bonus hereafter. He really gets great rotation on his free throw. That thing spins on the way up there. He's had plenty of practice. He has shot more free throws than any player in Wisconsin history. McNeil scores again. He's starting to take over the Marquette offense, and they need somebody to step up in that role. Oh, nice little use of the dribble. Wisconsin's got to make them use time on offense. Two and a half to go. Five-point game. The largest lead, 11 for Wisconsin. They have not trailed here in the second half. Flowers got away with a foul there. And then Taylor fouled on the drive. Uh, they set it up with the dribble if you take away the swing. 2.17 to go. 113th meeting all time. Wisconsin and Marquette. They've played every season but one in the last 50 years. Sean McDonough with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. Our producer, Scott Matthews. Our director, John McDonough. And our ESPN crew. Delighted to have you with us. Four fouls now on Wesley Matthews. And the first of two missed by Taylor. 75% for the year from the line. 79% career. Landry back in. Wisconsin, four out of 11 from the free throw line today. Taylor, a senior from Minneapolis. I will mention all Big Ten last year. One out of two, the lead six, 2.15 to go. They've had success with the high screen late. Let's see if they go to it. Thinking about three balls from Marquette, they are two out of 14 from beyond the arc today. Using a lot of time, 15 on the shot clock. McNeil, it rolls off, kept alive by Hayward, it picked off the floor by Taylor. Now the Badgers will look to run some clock. Look at this. The nation's leader in steals, McNeil. Woo! What a reaction. You've got to protect the basketball. But the foot speed and preparation by McNeil, extraordinary. Timeout, 
Wisconsin. Taylor just shows the ball, bringing it up with his left hand, and McNeil with great foot speed and also great hands. He concentrates on that dribble and picks his spot so well. Sometimes he gambles in passing lanes, but you've got to be a terrific defender to be able to take the ball away from an opposing point guard that easily. Almost Walt Frazier-like in his eight to seven steals against North Dakota State. It's amazing, and at a key juncture, you've got to turn and protect, keep the off arm there to control the defender. Heads up play on the defensive end, though. McNeil has 12 of Marquette's last 18 points. Here's the reset. He has scored the last six for Marquette as well. Double bonus each way and plenty of timeouts left. The arrow for Wisconsin. Marquette had a game earlier this year. The three-point win at Valparaiso when Dominique James scored Marquette's last 18 points of the game, including a three to win it with three and a half seconds to go. Sending the floor for the first time, playing the inbounder. Be careful of the home run if you're Marquette. And step to the ball if you're Wisconsin. Now Fitzgerald moves away from Kramenhoff, the inbounder. He'll look to double somewhere else. Kramenhoff with Landry, Taylor, Tucker, what, what, and Flowers for Wisconsin. What are the officials doing? I don't I mean, know. Well, Bo Ryan reminded Ed Hightower that Kramenhoff can run the baseline. And now Ed, uh, Ted Hillary keeps moving back and forth as to where to give him the ball. Now Fitzgerald comes back to guard the inbound. Fitzgerald, James, Matthews, McNeil, and Hayward on the court for Marquette. Minute and a half to go, four-point game. Tucker. Matthews backed away with his foul trouble. He couldn't hang in there. And another big bucket for Tucker. He has 26. Giving up the baseline that easily on a key juncture. It almost looked like he thought he was going to spin back, but didn't. Got fouled. James fouled. He'll shoot three. He was grazed by Michael Flowers. And then both Tim Higgins and Ted Hillary told Flowers to pipe down and Bo Ryan told him the same thing. Uh, Bo not happy on the foul at the other end, but here's that hesitation too. Matthew's gotten caught up in your point about the foul. I think the concern is why he stopped. But right here, the legs, and I don't know about that one. That was one of those play odds. But why even go near it? Oh, I agree, but still, you want to challenge but not hit. I think that was one that James got away with. Three shots for James. Tucker's 26 points, matching his season high. His sixth game of 20 or more in 10 games this year. Flowers still pleading his case with Ted Hillary. Mentioned James, not a particularly adept free throw shooter. 64% this year and career. He tends to lean back in the midst of that delivery. And that pulls it a little bit short mm -hmm. as he front-ended the first one. The way off, he knew it. He charged after it. And now, 105 to go. The ball and a five-point lead for Wisconsin. Tucker to the hoop. Too tough. Too tough. Poise. He wasn't going to charge. The little kiss. With a great body balance to avoid that charge. Outstanding performance by Orlando Tucker. Well, the go-to guy was there. Readily available. Preseason Big Ten player of the year. Only the second Wisconsin player to ever earn that honor. Devin Harris, the other back in 2003. But he knows that nobody can stop him. Great screen underneath by Landry. The screen off Hayward. And Matthews trying to take the charge, but the great body control by Tucker avoids it. What an influence great players can have. The impact, get the ball in his hand at key junctures, whether it's the post or the entry pass. Remember the lob a while ago? And not able to counter at the other end. And such maturity you know, so yeah. shown by the fifth-year senior. That's the leadership, Sean, that you were talking about that Bo Ryan praised so much. In all his years, he's never had a better leader, he said. And he's coached a long time, 23 years as a head coach. All here in the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. Division three, Platteville, and two years at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. 
And now in his sixth season in Madison, they had never won more than 22 games in a season before Bo Ryan got to Madison. They've averaged 22.4 wins per year since he's been there. His dad, Butch, coached youth teams, got him started. Right now, Marquette trying to get it going himself. they got to go to the rim, I think. McNeil trying to use a Hayward screen. He does go to the rim and scores. The lead, 5, 51 seconds to go. All out pressure. McNeil and Matthews have to be careful. They have four fouls apiece, and that's McNeil bodying up on Tucker. I think they got to try one more. I don't know. Well, somebody other than Matthews. Yeah. Well, Matthews did foul. Now he's fouled out. They wanted somebody else to foul, but the ball never got near anybody who was being guarded by someone other than Matthews or McNeil with four fouls apiece. Uh, pretty smart offense when you think about it. Well, they probably should have fouled Tucker right when he in caught the, the ball in the backcourt yep. to make him walk to the free throw line. He's only a 67% free throw shooter. And 15 seconds came off the clock on that possession for Wisconsin. So Matthews out of the ball game with nine points. Just three for 11 shooting. Well, they got to be prepared as to who to foul if they can or just give it to anybody. But the big thing now, Jay, they, Marquette, can go to the rim. They're probably not going to foul them, so they can just go for the two, at least this trip, and maybe one more. I mean, the two guys on the floor that I would look to foul would be Krabenhoft and perhaps Tucker, even though Tucker is such an outstanding player. And maybe Landry, too, but they probably won't let him touch it. Flowers now one for four from the line today as he gets the roll. First season as a full-time starter. He's the only starter who is not a veteran returning starter for Wisconsin. They're starting five today. Came into the ballgame with a combined 245 career starts. The reason why expectations are so high. Bo Ryan says it's good to be experienced, but you have to get better, too. Couple of misses by James and Hayward, and then Landry fouled. But time is running out on Marquette, down by seven. Wisconsin will shoot free throws with 21 and a half to go. And it's looking like the visiting team is going to win for the first time in six years in this rivalry. Five fouls, and now McNeil's out of the ball game. And Marquette competed at a very high level, but execution was somewhat lacking on their end. Yeah, on the offensive yeah. end. They did just about everything well except hit shots and mm -hmm. run offense. Yeah, they'll, they'll have a good year, but Wisconsin, one of those teams, you can't overlook them. Size, strength, and a star who makes other people better, and a guy who can position himself at various spots. So he's a tough matchup. Tucker. Yeah, he is so hard to guard. Really, the, the teams that have given Wisconsin the most trouble are teams that can really shoot him. I mean, Terrell Martin from Winthrop put in 31, and Winthrop, led by Greg Marshall, an outstanding coach, lost in overtime at the Cole Center. Missouri State, led by Blake Ahern, an outstanding shooting team, knocked down a bunch of threes. But Marquette was not able to shoot the ball well to put more pressure on this Wisconsin defense. They're not a good shooting team, particularly threes. 11 points now for Landry. Now he's been tough, Sean. Inside presence, good solid play overall. And he'll have bragging rights over his wife, who's a member, as we've said a couple times, of the Marquette women's team. Fitzgerald rebounds the miss. Marquette Picked in the preseason Big East poll to finish fourth. Behind yeah, Pittsburgh, Georgetown, and Syracuse. They surprised many finishing fourth in their first year in the league last year. Hayward the score. It's a six-point game with ten and a half to go. Lazar Hayward with ten points off the bench. And we send it back to Reese Davis. All right, Sean, in just 10.5 seconds of game time, you'll see Armonte Edwards, the SoCon Freshman of the Year for Appalachian State. Look at all those helmet stickers he's collected. He'd be a favorite on college football final. Division one semifinal coming up. Thank you, Reese. Ten and a half to go. Wisconsin. Hanging on to bragging rights in the state. There are four Division I programs in the state. Wisconsin Green Bay, Wisconsin Milwaukee, the others. 
And with this victory, assuming something dramatic does not happen, Bo Ryan will now be 16 and 2 against the three other Division I programs in this state. And a transplant from Pennsylvania, no less. He's been here long enough, though. I think he has to. Yeah, he's a resident. Feel like a native. Yeah, he's, I love he's done a great job with this Wisconsin program. He's a win two big, uh, big Ten championships right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. And then talking about how he developed this swing offense, watching and scouting different opponents, and taking things from a lot of coaches, a lot of spice and variety. He's picked up things that he liked while scouting back in the old days of in-person scouting. Five count. Wow. Perfect for Marquette. We talk about what they needed precisely. Mm. That's what they got. Wisconsin couldn't get it in. That, that's where you have to be stronger. That was a, a huge mistake by Wisconsin, not get to get the ball inbounds. Kubion into James, a contested three that wouldn't go. Batted around, controlled by Kramenhoff. He's fouled with six seconds to go. Well, oh, Ryan has had Wisconsin in the top four in the Big Ten in all five of his full seasons in Madison. And in Big Ten play, and he said, you know, this is an important rivalry game, but really the whole pre-conference schedule is to get you ready for the conference. That's ultimately how you're judged. And in Big Ten play, only Bobby Knight and Tom Izzo have a better winning percentage among Big Ten coaches all time. Well, he knows they don't hang banners up in the Kohl Center for non-conference record. They hang banners up for Big Ten championships, and that's what the Big Ten coaches value most. But having said that, I think this one tastes good. Oh, yeah. Oh, As rivalry matter, games, you always want to win. And, and a this lot of talk in the local media about these two coaches don't like each other. Publicly, they say all the right things. They certainly respect each other. But the relationship probably isn't warm and fuzzy. And they'll shake hands as James 3 ends the ball game. score Wisconsin 70 and Marquette 66 coming up next on ESPN it's the NCAA Division one double-a football championship semifinal action of the tournament Youngstown State versus Appalachian State continuing coverage of this game will be over on ESPN news with a post game extra in just a matter of moments this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports now let's go to Boone North Carolina to Pam Ward Mike Godfrey and Dave Ryan